<laughs> I'll go ahead and pull that up later. I'll just save it. What dipshit parks facing the wrong way? <laughs> Alrighty, that, that, that's not something you should be saying in court. That belongs to the fire oh, department. <laughs> I'll make the picture to you soon. I got a, I got a couple pictures. Oh, the blue truck. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. No, it's the chief truck facing the wrong direction. Yikes. Illegal parking. I don't want to know. I'll just give it a ticket. Your Honor, I'm getting drunk text from the plaintiff. It is. Alex, wrong side, wrong side. Uh, can, can you show me those texts? <laughs> yes, I will. Oh, God. <laughs> and I think Alex went the other side of the building. I'm here, don't worry. Frost, motherfucker. <laughs> See the man with the pink tie or the gold tie? It's the power tie. You're over here, okay? <laughs> Lovely. How do you touch on this? The OSPD and the FBI. Interesting. All right. That's everyone for the defense, Your Honor. So is everyone actually here now? Can we proceed? Yes. Defense, defense here. Everyone, everyone's here. Yes, Your Honor. Alrighty, we're only one hour and nine minutes late. I like it. Uh, right on time. This is scheduled. Uh, it's weird that the guy that scheduled the time couldn't show up on time, but that's okay. I didn't think oh, the other people would die. Uh, <laughs> but okay. Uh, obviously, you didn't think yourself would show up either, but that's fine. <laughs> All right, let me uh, pull up my notes here. Um, uh, do you guys have any additional evidence to submit today? Uh, before we get started, no, other than what you've already submitted, just our uh, our two requests for the civil court cases is our evidence. The two requests. There's the original one, and then there's an updated one. The updated one, which is the most recent one, will have all the information. Okay, okay. I, I see that. Yeah, it's actually broken down and has a little bit more information included. Okay. Everything for you, uh, Your Honor. So, uh, who is the owner of the vehicle? I am, Your Honor. Who is I? John Ross. Okay. Uh, and I understand that the, uh, the firefighter that... Um, this is alleged against, uh, is no longer with us and has taken a plane ticket one way, correct? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see here. Who is Ryan O and how are they related to the case? Uh, that is myself. Uh, I was in the passenger seat of the vehicle. Okay. Alrighty, and the defense, if you can just name out your, uh, your people as well. Currently? Um. Oh, anybody, anybody, uh, you'd like to use. Mm, okay. Where was it the stand? I see one person at the stand right now, standing on top of my table. Get down, thank you. <laughs> Alex, this is, uh, Chief Alex with the San Andreas Fire Rescue. Uh, behind okay. me is Operations Chief Kovacic, uh, with the San Andreas Fire Rescue Authority. And representing them today is Cesar Vasquez. Can you repeat your name again? Cesar Vasquez. Cesar. Can you spell out, please? Uh, C A E S A R. Mm -hmm. Cesar Vasquez, Your Honor. <laughs> Can you spell the last name, please? V A S Q E U E Z, Your Honor. Vasquez. Just how I thought it would be spelled. Uh, simple. Um. All right, so today we're going to be going over the case of, uh, we've got John Ross versus, uh, would this be the Polito Bay Fire Department, correct? It's going to be for the San Andreas Fire Rescue Authority. 
Um, okay, so the, the entire encompassing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, go ahead and uh, pitch your case. The floor is yours. I believe your name is uh, Saul Goodman. Uh, it's actually James McGill. James Sorry. McGill. James Even McGill. Better. Sorry, uh, there's another guy very, very similar to that name. Uh, that's a catchy name, Your Honor. I might have to use that one of these days. Uh, James McGill, Your Honor, uh, bar number 72140. Seven one. I am representing uh, both my clients here, the driver and the passenger. Uh, I can go over the case if you'd like, um, or if there's something in specific as far as our opening um, would just be to reiterate the uh, last uh, meeting we had was mediation uh, between ourselves and the fire department. However, we weren't able to come to a reasonable outcome uh hence why we are re-bringing this case back to the civil courts uh to make a decision uh we are requesting for fees to fix the vehicle which is a 2020 ferrari la ferrari ferrari a porta sorry porta <laughs> i'm very hard on my words here your honor um it was uh not only damaged by the fire engine, but it was also water damage was caused to it when the uh, firefighter Rob Patterson uh, took the top deck gun and uh, sprayed a bunch of water, uh, actually breaking the glass and causing uh, both my plaintiffs here uh, lacerations to the face, which required medical attention at the Polito Bay Care Center. Um, we're, we're looking for medical um uh, medical <laughs> uh, just to cover medical there we go um, and then we are also looking for settlement on just the uh, compensation because of the my, uh, just from lost wages emotional distress because you have a person who is acting in official capacity as a firefighter uh, in a how many ton engine uh going at you ramming you off the road which subsequently let my plaintiff drive into a rock um mm -hmm. causing him a lot of damage um, and, and just real quick about rock in question that is a picture you submitted is that what that is yes that is correct that was okay, a picture, picture taken from here. the plaintiffs um as you can see it's a uh, the vehicle still in reasonable condition however the parts just to replace the front fender uh there's also some damage to the radiator and some of the inside uh, parts i'm not a mechanic however we do have a uh, estimate from the dealership and then also from the body shop that would be doing those fixes um, it does amount to the parts at least amount to two million three hundred fifty thousand nine hundred sixty five and ninety four cents the labor for it is going to be $149,035.38 uh, for medical expenses uh, and also physical therapy because of the uh, trauma that happened not only to the face but to the um, exposed uh, body parts like the arms would uh, amount to for uh, my co-client Ryan O would be $498,234.32 um, and then for my primary plaintiff here uh, John Ross it's going to be $512,894.32 um, and that's all going to equate to $4,989 uh, and so, I'm sorry four hundred four million nine hundred thousand eighty nine six hundred twenty five and eighty seven cents um in damages done um and yeah so that's uh that's what we have um as far as why we believe that the san andreas san andreas uh, fire authority should be responsible is because uh, he was employed at this time he had multiple um dealings with their uh, fire command being written up uh, this was discussed uh, prior to the meeting. Also, we did a, a request, a public Freedom of Information Act uh, on the employee 
Um, we found that he was a rank up probationary. Um, however, when this all was happening, he had access to these vehicles. The training was quite poor. Um, and ultimately, it wasn't even the fire command that noticed when he was stationed at Sandy Shores that he was uh, under the influence of alcohol. Um, they didn't monitor him when he took the fire apparatus, including his dog inside the vehicle that he brought to work. Um, and the relocation, uh, when getting to Polito, uh, when questioned by his uh, superiors, he was just let go for the day. Uh, he was able to go home, and there was no report on his inebriation, uh, we believe, to cover the story. Um, we tried to get a fire response out to the scene, well, at least my client did. Uh, there was no medical response. My clients had to escort themselves to the Polito Bay Care Center. Um, I think that there's a lack of uh, responsibility on the fire authorities' part in this, um, since if this uh, employee was not only trained to be able to operate these um, pieces of equipment appropriately and also that it's on the supervisors for not only seeing him um, intoxicated not stopping it and then allowing him to essentially steal one of their uh, pieces of equipment causing this much damage so uh, I risked my side of the case okay oh. give me a second here Okay, defense, if you want to go ahead with your opening argument. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, my name mm -hmm. is Cesar Vasquez. I'll be representing the San Andreas Fire Rescue mm -hmm. Authority as their uh, personal legal counsel, <laughs> counsel for this case. Excuse me. Um, I would like to open up by making some clarifying remarks um, regarding the plaintiff's uh, initial statements. Uh, contrary to what we might be coming into here to believe today um we're not coming into this court case to determine whether or not what happened happened uh it, it's very clear to me that um the evidence that will be submitted today in the court uh does strongly suggest some sort of alleged wrongdoing against the san andreas fire rescue authority um mm -hmm. what i would ask you to do your honor is to uh keep an open mind as to the specifics about exactly what the plaintiff is asking for today. The numbers that he, uh, he has quoted, and uh, we will go into later on in the court case, uh, I believe are not the best representation for the explicit damages that he has evidence for, um, mm -hmm. and that actually actually happened. Um, there was some uh, re revelations in the uh, mediation that um, I will be just mentioning for the court, uh, just so you have the full dimensions of what exactly happened, Your Honor. Um, objection, Your Honor. But, okay. What's your objection? Uh, in the meeting, which uh, this is preliminary to the uh, mediation, was that the uh, anything that happened within the meeting uh, between the mediation would not be brought into the civil court. Was there an agreement on this? It was actually yes, brought sir. on brought on by the uh, the state or the the city. I'm sorry, my connection, uh, my ears, head out there. Could you say that one more time? Uh, yes, it was uh, brought on by the San Andreas Fire Authority that this would not uh, none of the conversations withheld and or within the mediation would be brought to the civil court case. Do you have this in writing? Uh, this, uh, this is an agreement. Uh, counselor for the city just agreed that we, we both I agreed, agreed, Your Honor. Okay, okay, continue. Uh, try not to use anything from this, uh, this situation yes. here. Yes, Your Honor, I'll clarify that I will not be releasing any explicit um, information pertaining to the mediation um, in this court case. So I, I will clarify on that end. But uh, just in conclusion, Your Honor, I do ask that you keep an open mind as to the specific amount that the uh, plaintiff and their counsel are asking for today. Um, I, I do believe that the evidence demonstrates they are, you know, they uh, are due compensation on behalf of the state. But I do believe, and I believe you and the rest of the court will also come to believe, 
that it is not the number that they have quoted you so far. Your That's Honor, to, uh, to continue the, the uh, defense here, um, your, sorry, the uh, plaintiff is requesting compensation for um, their medical costs. Mm -hmm. um, do keep in mind that the holder of medical health care insurance is only expected to pay the copay of yeah, no, we'll the uh, we'll, we'll get to the evidence about that. You know, of the uh, <laughs> um, of the total cost. Uh, please keep that in mind when discussing the numbers of uh, the request. And with yeah, that, um, um, also please please keep in mind um, that not everyone in this courtroom has gone through the training that. Uh, San Andreas Fire Rescue Authority has to offer. That's all I got. Is, is that all for the defense in, in total? That is your honor. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, so I am curious uh, about these numbers you've given me. Um, do you have paperwork from the quotes uh, to repair the vehicle. What was the name of the car again? Mm -hmm. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, go ahead. Can we refrain from speculation on behalf of the uh, court case? Uh, yes, we're gonna have to uh, to to not include the what ifs, the maybes, the might happens. Um, you know, court court is about the facts, not about the this might happen. Correct. Or some kind of assessment that they have, correct? Um, oh. Uh, another question here for the plaintiff. Do you have a list of what the repairs are going to cost? 
list it out item by item. Is that something you can get to me? Add a little. Okay. Um, another question I have here. You, you you seem to not mention something else that you submitted to me, which was the lawyer fees, um, totaling to <clears throat> the amount of four hundred and seventy-eight thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars and ninety-one cents. Um, I this uh, does make me really curious. Um, and matter of fact, kind of makes me want to switch jobs. Uh, what what is your hourly rate for a case like this? Correct. Correct. Just out of curiosity, though, if you could give me an hourly rate, um, how much would that be, roughly? It doesn't have to be exact, uh, just a rough estimate of what you would. Dollars, that is. process okay uh, so just doing a little quick quick math here um, that number is not really adding up here so I let's see here let's take the four seven we'll round it up to 479 uh, 439,000 okay divided by two we're left with 239 500 say mediation cost I don't know what a hundred and thousand dollars maybe um, including the retainer that they've paid to you. I, I, I'm just trying to get a, a hand on this, this figure you're giving me. Um, you, you've gave me a number that doesn't add up to what you're asking in compensation for. Uh, and and, and you, don't, you don't have any records of how your time's been utilized or anything like that, like you, you would have. Um, just really having a hard time wrapping my head around half a million dollars for a case like this. Um, I do understand that you guys did go to mediation and that they are probably high high, uh, high priority clients of yours um, and do pay a lunch. I was just trying to get a hand on that. Um, I will bring that, we'll bring that back up later when we get back to uh, conversation. <clears throat> yeah, we'll talk about that later. That's that's not important right now. Um, okay. Um, okay. So for the defense here, uh, I do have a, a couple of questions. Um, yes, so <clears throat> can can you be more specific? Um, on the uh, the member's rank that was uh, alleged driving this fire truck into uh, his vehicle. Your Honor, that's quite all right. I actually would like to talk about that in a witness interview, if you can wait for that. Otherwise, we'll talk about it here. Uh, okay, uh, we can we can wait for that. Um, Thank you. 
Uh, no problem. We'll get to that right after this. Um, uh, another question uh, toward the fire department. Is it a standard procedure for a a fire, fire employee, um, whether that be a paramedic or a, an actual firefighter himself, to be alone at the station and to be working solo? Is that is that a normal procedure? Given uh, our numbers, sir, yes. Um, okay. Sometimes, you know... Uh, mm, yeah. Shut up, please. Thank you. We will talk about that in the witness interview, Your Honor. Please. <laughs> all right. Um, are you going to just uh, forward all of my questions to witness to the witness interviews? No, Your Honor. It, it depends on those specific questions. Okay. I I feel like. Those are pretty easy questions to answer, but that's okay. Um, you do have that right. Um, I will save the rest of them uh, for when you have witnesses on the stand. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll go ahead and go first here. Uh, the plans, do you guys have any witnesses you'd like to call up? Uh, I, I heard it still hasn't reached its destination, so I understand that. It is, isn't it? Um, okay. Oh, so that's you have no one you want to ask uh, any questions to any witnesses. That's that's all right. Uh, defense, I I know you do have uh, witnesses you'd like to call to the stand. That's correct, Your Honor. Can we start that process? Oh, you can go ahead with your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the defense would like to call Operations Chief Kovacic to the stand, please. Okay, can you spell that for me? I don't want to call it. Uh, Kovacic will be C O V A C I C H, Your Honor. Okay. All right, you can go ahead and come up here. Okay, uh, go ahead and put your hand on that uh, sacred book next to you. Uh, go ahead and raise your other one. Um, pretty much you solemnly swear and tell nothing but the truth. I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Short and sweet. That's how I like it. Um, make the score go by faster. Okay, you can go ahead with your, uh, your initial questioning here. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Operations Chief Kovacic, how are you doing today, sir? Good, thank you. Excellent. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. I have a couple questions just regarding uh, the specifics about um, Firefighter Patterson when he was a part of our department, sir, or your department, excuse me. Um, do you play a pretty big role in the training? I supervise the trainers, that is correct. Okay, so is it safe to say that most of the training that the trainers themselves known as FTOs or field training officers your honor is it safe to say that those uh individuals have received training by you more than likely correct i have not trained every individual in the department however i have trained most of the current trainers of course and do you know who was training um firefighter patterson at the time he was uh introduced I would have to check my records I have with me. Um, uh, well, the point I'm trying to get to, actually, is, is if we can avoid that, is uh, the individual that trained Firefighter Patterson, did you play a role in training them, the uh, field training officer? I don't have a 100% answer, but more than likely. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so what are uh, some of the things that a probationary firefighter is taught about uh, before they even step in a fire fire truck? 
Okay. So whilst they're undergoing fire training, they're covered off on policies, use of radio transmissions, which uniforms to wear when, what the vehicles are, what their jobs are, what vehicles go to which call, types of calls, fires, medical calls. They're given basic medical training to the EMTB level or emergency medical technician basic level. They're also taught how to deal with fires, such as structure fires, MVAs, and they are taught a course known as the fire driving course. Okay, and just for the, for the record, this is before they even step in a fire truck, correct? That is correct. This is during their training phase, which is under controlled environment. Okay. They have not been sworn in as, an, as, a, as a firefighter at that stage. Okay. Uh, and so going back to the training they received, what specifically is part of the uh, vehicle training, sir? Okay. So the vehicle training covers off the safe operation and use of fire vehicles. Primarily, this is done with a fire engine or one of our ladder trucks as they are larger vehicles. We train them on how to use the largest vehicles during the drain driving step before we move on to our smaller ambulances and uh, other small vehicles. The driving training specifically covers the following. It covers the basic operations, such as the use of all the equipment, lights, sirens, headlights, cruise control, air horns. It also covers off when to use lighting, use of emergency lights, what each type of response is, so our priority one, two, and three responses, when to use lights and sirens, how to position vehicles on a fire event, a fire call, or an MVA call. Also teaches them how to deal with low speed and high speed operations, such as handling, turning, safely maneuvering vehicles on roads and in traffic. And then also, it also covers off safe transport of patients if they're driving an ambulance. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kovic. So it's safe to say it's quite a lengthy process to be trained at just at the very vehicle aspect of firefighter training. Correct. Okay. And it, it's your expectation and belief that every firefighter that is trained um, to the firefighter level in our academy um, represents these skills effectively. That is correct. If we identify any shortcomings from anyone, they are immediately sent for retraining. Thank you. And um, expanding on that, was there any instance where Firefighter Patterson was um, brought in for retraining, so to say? I had received no notification of that. Okay. So as, as far as your belief as an operations chief, he uh, demonstrated effective skills as a probationary firefighter operating a motor vehicle. I trust my FTOs, and if the FTO said when they were initially trained that he is to the appropriate standard, then he's to the appropriate standard. They have the discretion on that. Okay. Um, that should do it, Your Honor. No further questions. Okay. Uh, plaintiffs, you guys have any questions for him? I am the operations chief of the San Andreas Fire Rescue Authority. So I oversee all operational matters. I oversee policy, implementation of policy, and I oversee training. Uh, so that's actually a multi-stage system. So basic, it, generally this is identified by our captains. They will handle all basic discipline, which is simple offenses. If it's a more concerning offense, such as insubordination, failure to follow policy, this will be brought up to our battalion chiefs. And if that, if necessary, that is when I get involved. I, If it's such a serious offense, it will go directly to the fire chief. But generally, it, the, the cases don't get passed out battalion chiefs.
Oh, can I get a copy of this before we start going through this? Um, I'll take it in the uh, the DM there. You're looking at the standard operating procedures. Uh, Please company one manual back. is the one that I have. I. Guidelines. Let's see here. Thank you. Well, it looks like this was written on uh, what? What is this? July the twenty ninth. Yes, so that's our company specific guidelines document. That is not our training document, so. That is correct. He had not received his EMTB certification due to that needing to be redone. He has it expired. He did. That is a standard requirement for all personnel before they even become allowed to go onto frontline duty. That would be at the discretion of the fire chief. I don't. I leave public request for that to the chief himself. And what would you be looking to uh, get out of this? Uh, just a background of his history. I see that here on page five, I believe, right? Um, if we can't come to a conclusion today, then it's a little late to file for discovery right now to get more information. Uh, I don't want to recess, uh, as you did take a while to get here. Um, nothing against you about that, but I would hate to have to file for a recess after we did start an hour late. So, but if we can't come to a conclusion today, then we, then I will, uh, I will file that motion for discovery, um, and then we will have that information for the next time we meet.
Okay. Uh, we can uh, touch on that later. Correct. Uh, I remember, yes, I had one instance of dealing with him and insubordination. Okay, uh, objection, Your Honor. If it's based on insubordination, how is that relevant to the case at hand? I, I, uh, yeah, he, he didn't, he didn't lead the question with saying he was insubordinate. Um, he was just asking a general question about his past. Uh, no, sir. Uh, nothing that I recall or I have come had come across my desk. Okay, uh, you can go ahead and return back to your desk. I do have a few questions for him, um, just to clear some things up. Um, so his rank was probationary, correct? That, that's what I heard. Yes, sir. He started off, uh, yes, Your Honor, he started off as a uh, volunteer firefighter, which when mm -hmm. he was still a member of a, another agency, and then he transferred over, and he gained the rank of probationary when he became a full-time firefighter, which is our first entry-level rank. Okay. Um... How long has he been in that rank? He had been in that rank for approximately two weeks. Okay. Um, so I, I I I heard this earlier. I'm not sure if this is exactly what you said, but something along lines like probationary off uh, firefighters are not sworn in. Is that correct? Is that what you said? Okay. So we use we use probationary in two ways. Okay. We use probationaries as the first rank they attain. Probationary is basically a rank where we see if they're going to have what it takes to be part of the fire department, or, okay. and as such, it's easier for us to remove them if required. Okay. So, they're on probation, effectively. So, are, that doesn't kind of goes around my question. Right. Are they sworn in officers or no? Or sworn in firefighters, sorry. Once they've completed training, they are, yes. Okay, and he, he, had he, he had not completed training, because you said that he was still his... waiting for his EM, EMTB training, correct? Right. So he had, he had completed his firefighter initial training, but not the EMT uh, part of it. Let me just have a look at my notes quick, Your Honor. Okay, I ahead. may have made a mistake. Okay. Actually, yes, my apologies. He had completed his EMTB training. That was my apologies. I read the wrong name. Okay. Um, can I get a Can I get a copy of that paper? Yeah. Yes, of course, Your Honor. You can bring it up here real quick, and I just want to look at it. Um. Okay. So exactly where is it saying? I will uh, send you the uh, digital file as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and go back to your uh, stand. Let's, here, let me look over this. It will be row number 64, uh, Your Honor. Here. Yeah, I see it here. Uh, what does NCI stand for? 
mass casualty incident training, Your Honor. Okay. It's a requirement between our paramedic and EMT training levels. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um... Cross-reference this. So it looks like he was trained on August the 25th, the year of 2020, correct? That is the day. Yeah. Joe Miller? Yes, that is one of our fire captains, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and that That's... is the same date that this incident happened, I believe. Not... Yes, Your Honor. That... This specific training is just as EMT training. It's not okay. a record. Oh, okay, it's okay, All right. okay. The... So he had just received his EMT training, which would, if you go to the other document, Mr. McGill submitted page five. He needs that to uh, be part of the engine company. Correct, Your Honor. Correct, okay. Um, so he was authorized to drive that engine, correct? Under our training requirements, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um paper back up here. Uh, so I believe it was said that he was stationed at Sandy Shores and then traveled to Polito Bay to take care of this. Uh, is it a usual practice of the department to be able to travel through two different cities? Uh, we will move our firefighters and equipment around as necessary to provide the best coverage for the area, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Last question here. Uh, if you had to give an average, uh, how long would a firefighter stay in the probationary stage? Your Honor, with the probationary stage, there's actually a varying amount of time. It depends okay. on their performance, their attitude, their grasping of skills to the required standards. In if order you could to give like an, an average, what do you, how long? Would you say the, it is? the ideal candidate is one and a half weeks? Okay, so a little bit less than two weeks. Yes, we have had cases of upwards of four to five weeks. Okay, um, I don't have any more questions. Uh, I believe the defense and everybody had to have any more questions. I can go ahead and go and sit back down. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do you guys have any more witnesses you'd like to call? For the defense, Your Honor? Yes. Yes, sir. The defense would like to call Chief Alex Icona to, or Alex to the, um, stand. To the stand, okay. Right. Go ahead and put your hand on that magical book. And, uh, raise your other hand. Right. There we go. And then, uh, do you swear to, uh, tell her nothing but the truth? I swear. Okay. Okay, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Chief Alex, how are you today, sir? <laughs> Give me a second. What are we waiting on here? Um, my witness has to go inside his head. Okay. Just to get a general understanding, what kind of uh, questions are you planning on asking him? Uh, I'll be asking him general questions about the insurance that we uh, provide for our fire engines. Okay. So, okay. real high high pulse stuff, you know. My favorite kind of stuff, insurance.
actually, that child happens to be on a different floor, but they cry loud. Uh, I do believe that their mother may have told them no. Good lungs, Your Honor. Very. Uh, sometimes it amazes me. The defense would like to ask the plaintiff, does that pass the APGAR, sir? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Please redact my question, Your Honor. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and redact that. I I do not believe it. It's not your turn to speak, sir. Uh, oh yeah, I believe it. It's overruled. Um. Uh, it, this was not the fire department asking you the question. That's the only reason I'm gonna go ahead and take that off record. Is our lawyer, which uh, has already stated that he is not part of the fire department. I do believe that was just a common mistake on his part. Well, don't we all like showing up with the court on time? <sighs> I... Your Honor, my opponent is clearly trying to provoke pity points among the uh, counsel. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, what, what, in, what information would the insurance bring us here? Uh, sir, please, please calm, calm down, please. I would hate to hit you with contempt of court. Back to the defense. I apologize for the wait, Your Honor. I'm back. Okay, that's all right. Uh, it's not an hour and nine minutes like some people. Go ahead with your questioning. Great. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, Mr. Alex, if you could please uh, state your full name and uh, rank for the court. I am Alex Icono, Chief, Chief of Department for San Andreas Fire Rescue Authority. Thank you. And uh, Chief Alex, how long have you been in your position, sir? Approximately two months, sir. Great. So you're um, quite familiar with uh, questions, were you, with the intricacies of um, uh, paperwork and the bureaucracy of the position. Is that correct? Yes, being as I came from being district chief after being lieutenant for several months. That's uh, great. Yeah, I'd like to say I uh, found my way around the book. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, Chief Alex, I'll be asking you questions today about the insurance policy that the department retains on its uh, apparatuses that are in use currently. Um, uh, just obviously for the record, all our apparatuses are currently insured under a common insurance group. Is that correct? Your your uh, apparatuses. Correct. Uh, okay. real real quick here. Uh, what would the the insurance of the the uh, engines? Uh, how would that persuade anything in this case? Uh, uh we're, well, not, we're not arguing the damages to the engines right now. Uh, no, no, of course not, Your Honor. Um, it does kind of feel like a filibuster here. I uh, I understand, and I I wouldn't want to dream of that, Your Honor. But um. I would like to suggest at the end of this line of questioning that um, it's possible that uh, the insurance policy of the fire department may be willing to accept the cost of um, uh, repairs um, and recovery for that, the That would be vehicle. something that would be dealt with outside of the courts. Um, I would have no say, so I can't make an insurance company do it. You know, I can't tell them what to do. Um, I can't tell them to cover it or not to cover it. Okay, so just just to be clear, you you will not be accepting this line of questioning. I I just do not believe that there is a valid uh, reasoning behind this questioning. Uh, okay. Your Honor, I can't convince you otherwise. So if if that's your stance on it, I don't have any further questions. Okay. Um, Plaintiff's 
you have any questioning for him. How you doing? Please make sure to keep these questions relevant to this case. <laughs> Are you suggesting we get a medical diagnosis of him? Actually just, uh, Your Honor, do I oh. need to object to the relevance of this questioning? <laughs> do I need to? Actually, uh, Your Honor, I just completed my yearly physical for the department, so uh... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deny that uh, request for medical. Um, that's not going to be necessary. Uh, please, please stop! Please stop throwing pity jabs at the uh, defense. Please go ahead. So our hiring process begins with an application, of course, and upon review of that application from our uh, FTOs. Um, they then go through a verbal interview with the applicant, um, this is to get a, kind of a baseline for their, I guess their personality, their intentions, and their, um, I guess their level of competence just to see where they're at personality-wise and see, uh, if they'd be a good candidate for SAF. All right. Um, upon... Uh, approval of the verbal interview, they are in the training phase. Um, at this point, they are not yet the probationary firefighter. They are in training. So uh, during the training phase, they are exposed and walked through the every aspect of the department and how it works that uh, Operations Chief Kovacic discussed earlier. And upon completion of this training, then they begin their trial period as a probationary. Typically, yes. And occasionally I'll pop in on an interview and go along with it as well, but uh, typically, yes. The, excuse me, the same people that do the applications typically set up a training with that same person. Um, not that I was aware of, not until the, uh, incidents that I brought us here today. Uh, that I do not have an, a uh, an answer for, because I do not, uh, I don't have these specific numbers on all the members. If an incident does come to my attention or is brought to my attention, um, then I typically keep on top of it, but I trust my officers and my chain of command to handle issues before it gets to my level. So I'm, I can't give a specific number to Patterson specifically. Um... I was not uh, prepared to provide said inf that specific information, but after uh, after some time, I could yes, I would be able to uh, grab that. Um, Objection, relevance, Your Honor. Uh, 
Uh, I believe that the uh, the operations chief has already answered that question. That sometimes it is sparse, and that only one person may be there. Being that it was part of their initial training, yeah. Um, especially if they're the only person on it, uh, on duty, that is. Um, it would be kind of redundant to have them uh, as a staff member, but not able to drive to any alarms that they're activated for. So that's why it is part of the base training that everyone goes through, so that way everyone is at the same level of qualification to drive these vehicles. Just to clarify, are you asking why he was terminated? That I do not have an answer for, being that it was handled by somebody in the chain of command. Uh, it's one of those things that may not go all the way up to the chief of department level. Uh, battalion chief may be, uh, Operation Chief Kovacic may have uh, more information on that, but that is uh, something that may not always come up to my level, so I'm unaware of uh, the specifics of his termination. I do believe the last time he was up here, didn't you go through his disciplinary action with him? Uh, Your Honor, the termination was circumstantial. I reject the relevance of it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. And, yeah, approve that. Uh, um, the the loss of job. Uh, I, I, you can, uh, you, you, you can use common sense to, uh, know why he was terminated. Uh, I, Other people, right? The government. Um, right. Into Guantanamo. Uh, yeah, the plane hasn't landed yet, though. I think it's still running out of gas. Um, so, so you're just trying to get an understanding of why he was fired. Uh, I, I'm going to have to use common sense on this one. Uh, um, I don't believe we need to waste uh, any more time uh, going over why he was terminated. Um, it is obvious uh, why he was terminated. Uh, he caused great damage and great harm to some two people.
Uh, I don't. I don't think the prior actions would have a concern uh, with the monetary uh, compensation that you guys are asking for. Um, what what we figured out so far, even as the defense has said that we know what happened. There's no questioning what happened, right? The questioning here is. I... Okay. Uh, I, I, you don't need more evidence to uh, prove that they're in the wrongdoing. Um, uh, they, we... All right. They, they've already, they've already proven uh, a little bit of wrongdoing in their part. You could say. Okay. Is that all the witnesses? The defense okay. has one additional one, Your Honor. Okay. Who would that witness be? Uh, Mr. Uh, is it Mr. Alvarado, the plaintiff, sir? Ross. No, Ross, I believe, yeah. Mr. Ross, excuse me. The defense calls him to the stand. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, go ahead and put your hand on that uh, lovely book right there. Put your other hand in the air. Yep, just like that. Beautiful. Uh, go ahead. Uh, do you swear to tell nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Proceed. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And thank you, Mr. Ross. I will try and keep this short screen to the point for the benefit of all parties here today. Um, Mr. Ross, if it's okay with you, I would like to talk about the injuries you sustained during the incident. Is that all right, sir? I believe that was already discussed by the uh, by the um, plaintiff. Uh, it looks like he he sustained lacerations to the face. Yes, yes, sir, Your Honor. Uh, that was mentioned. I I would like to specify the exact numerical value that was filed. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm just just making sure, just clarifying. Yep. Is is it gonna be okay to talk about the injuries with you, Mr. Ross, or is that too sensitive? Yeah, if you, if you like, you can talk about the injuries. Okay. I I, I sincerely appreciate that, sir. Um, so, uh, just a quick recap for the benefit of the court. Can you uh talk about the mechanism of your injuries? Uh, leading up to the lacerations and whatever additional injuries you sustained. Just like the report says, I had a laceration to the face, cut bruises. Um, you know, the guy that my wrist was injured as well. Uh, my knee was scraped up here from the impact. Uh, okay. Airbag, uh, I, I, you know, I had the, the airbag deployed. You know, I had whiplash you know, on my neck. You know, I had some back pains afterwards. Um, you know, normal normal things when you hit a rock, you know. Of, of course, Mr. Ross. And just for the record, were you wearing your seatbelt at the time of the in uh, incident? Always got to in those things, you know. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, and the plaintiff uh, mentioned that you uh, had to drive yourself to the hospital. Is that correct? Well, we had to wait for another good car there. But, yes, we, we did have to make our way to get checked out. Okay, and which hospital did you go to? Oh, Toledo Bay. Okay, and uh, 
so it sounds like the doctor took a look at the lacerations. He did he also take a look at the wrist and uh, legs and back? I believe so. It should be all on record. Okay. Okay. Um. Thank you. And um. And it also says here you're seeking uh, damages for. Um. Quote ongoing physical therapy. Is that correct? Okay, what, uh... That doctor said I should have took therapy for, you know, my arm, my, you know, my wrist, making sure everything's coming back good, and, you know, for my back, I took a little sore in the lower back, uh... Okay. Tendon damage, you know, all all that good stuff. Okay, and that was at the direction of your doctor? At the hospital? Okay. And he said to take it for how long? I don't want to get me lying here. I have to go back and check the paperwork. That's uh, why. It's, it's alright. say at least eight months. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And um, was uh, at least part of the expense covered at the time by your copay? I have to pay out of pocket. You had to pay out of pocket? Yes, sir. And is that totaling to the number you quoted, or is it a different number? Yes, sir. Well, when you have an income limit, you know, you don't do those shipping notes. It's kind of hard to do all that stuff, but yes, that's the reason why the, the, the number that was submitted to this was kind of high, because it was out of pocket at the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very understandable, um, Mr. Ross. Uh, I, I do, however, find it strange that a man of uh, such good fortune as yourself wouldn't think it prudent to... Uh, have insurance for an incident like this, you know? Doesn't that sound strange? I think how you do it. If you got money to pay for, I don't like money nobody bills, you know. Okay. You know, we we just started a business, so we we're still in the process of all that. So, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Yeah. Um. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ross. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. McGill, do you have any questions? Doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Uh, still got a little some back pains a little bit. My wrist still sprained, but uh, nothing can keep me uh keep me down. Yeah, uh, I go once a week. Was once a week, so I think we're to get about two fees so far. <clears throat> yes, sir. I paid it all right, sir. No, sir. The, like I said, once we hit the rock and everything, you know, I'll check with my partner next to me, uh, make sure he was still good, and then nobody, no turn around, nothing. They just kept driving away. Yeah, we we got we got taken there. We couldn't drive our our our, our vehicle was you know disabled. It was sold. It was there was no driving it. It was. Right, it was Susan out, it was just an operable drive.
Okay, we got to pick myself there. Okay, thank you. Oh, let's conclude all the inter the uh, witness interviews. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Um, so now comes the difficult uh, time of making a complete and fair ruling on this. Um, so. Your Honor, can uh, I say something real quick? Uh, go ahead. All right. So, you know. I'm I'm fair game. I'm fair people here. I understand people gotta make a living and everything, but just to keep this in mind, back your head, uh, the whole point of uh, Sim wanted to put Samad Tar under their insurance. Well, the reason why is that is because when you claim an insurance on a car, it devalues the car because it goes on that vehicle's VIN number. So, just correct. Keep that in mind. I just want to pass that on. I, I am aware of that. Yes. Um. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, monetary compensation uh, for the loss of wages and emotional distress for $500,000 each. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and approve that one. Um, just based on that they were out of work, um, you do now have him once a week going to physical therapy, losing money on that. And now he also has emotional distress of crashing a $4.5 million car into a rock and then getting essentially waterboarded inside of this car. Um, so that one is going to be uh, approved for both. Uh, the medical expenses uh, for both will also be approved at the full amount. Um, uh, now for the other ones, uh, these are going to be a little iffy. Uh, I would like, before I approve uh, these amounts, I would like to have uh, an itemized uh, paper for the parts and labor of the vehicle. Uh, Two and a half million dollars of parts doesn't equal up to $150,000 of labor. Um, that's, that's almost bogus. Um, so I would like to have the, those papers in my hands before I can exactly rule on those. And I know it looks like it is nighttime right now and those places are probably closed. Uh, so that will have to be in the morning. Uh, I would also like uh, from you, Mr. McGill, a um, a structured document showing um, the associated lawyer fees with this case and how they would equal up to four hundred and seventy-eight thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars and ninety-one cents. Uh, I would just like to have a better understanding of this before I can uh, rule on this fairly for them to pay it. Uh, and that should cover everything. Um, so as of now, the total is, let me get my calculator out here, um, to Mr. John Ross, the total to be paid out is $1,012,894.32. And the total to be paid out to... Mr. Ryan O is $998,234.32. Um, the amount paid to John Ross uh, will have to be adjusted uh, under the circumstances that we do receive these papers from Mr. McGill and we can uh, better assess the uh, value of the things that John is going to have to cover. Um, so are there any objections to this ruling? Uh, just uh, drop it by uh, the clerk, and she can she can give it to me. I'll be in my office, and I'll be able to uh, assess it, and then I will let everyone know uh, when it is assessed and updated. And
I've heard. Yeah, I believe it's called Dream Cars. Yes, sir. They, they mentioned that earlier. Okay. Air mechanics. Okay, I got you. Okay, that makes sense. I would still like an itemized list of parts uh, that equal up to that amount, um, just to ensure that um, we're not charging $150,000 for a, I don't know, a piece of carpet, um, like a stitch, one stitch for $100,000. I'm just trying to ensure that everything is legitimate and is covered. Question, Your Honor. Uh, go ahead. Uh, just to be clear, um, what uh, which costs are you ruling in their favor for? Um, as of right now, uh, technically all of them, uh, but the cost of parts, labor, and uh, correlated and lawyer fees are subject to change uh, when they get medical, these correct. official documents. Uh, the medical expenses have been approved. Okay. I and as well as the lost wages, uh, that expense has also been approved. I, just, I, I would just like to be clear that you're ruling in favor of, uh, so I have my paperwork right, medical expenses, parts and labor of the car, um, physical therapy, and if I'm missing anything? Um, I, I don't believe you heard me correctly. Um, so... As of right now, the only costs that are being approved as this second are the medical expenses for both uh, and the monetary compensation, lost wages, and emotional distress. The uh, parts and labor and the lawyer fees are still uh, subject to change uh, just whenever they get me that paperwork. Okay, I, asked, I do ask that you review the numbers for the medical expenses due to the client not having health care insurance. Um, I don't feel as if we should be ordered to pay out that full amount because of his conscious decision to not have health care insurance. Alex, uh, well, in, in, this, in this state, um, we don't require health insurance. Um, it's not his fault that he decided not to do it. Um, he looks like a, what you could say, healthy man would look like. Um, it's his conscious decision if he does not want to purchase uh, health care. Um, for what he said earlier on that is that he's starting a new business and that he's trying to save money to invest into his business. So I could understand why he would not purchase that. Uh, I don't believe that he should be penalized in a monetary value because uh, of him not having insurance and then we would be getting into this speculation of what it may cost if he had insurance because unless we have two people going through the exact same situation again we would not know the exact monetary value of what's happening so, is there anything else that'll be it uh, um just for my record your honor what will be the earliest date to reappeal the uh, decisions here uh, well, I should have my paperwork finished up sometime tonight. Uh, you can repeal, you can appeal after 24 hours. Um. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I do remind you that you only have up to seven days to reappeal. Like to appeal. Is there anything else? Not for the defense, Your Honor. Plaintiffs? Okay, alrighty. Go ahead and say court is adjourned.